Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Jeremiah, and I'm here to talk to you about our evaluation system, what's old and what's new. First, thank you for taking the time to review this audio slideshow. It contains important information about our evaluation system and how we use evaluations to help you develop the skills to be independent doctors. During this slideshow, I will review what's old, our philosophy on evaluation, our types of evaluations, the uniqueness of each evaluation for each rotation, and how our evaluations are used. I'll then talk about what's new. What are Milestones 2.0 from the ACGME? How are new and improved tools align with Milestones 2.0? And how we help faculty help you. So first, let's talk about our philosophy, which has not changed. Our goal as educators is to help you become the best you can be. It is a privilege for us to be part of your journey from internship to graduation. We want to help you reach your highest potential. Two cornerstones of partnering with you to reach your highest peak are the evaluation and feedback we, your faculty, provide. Often the terms evaluation and feedback are used interchangeably, but from our program's perspective, we separate the terms. Evaluation is the assessment of skills through observation and questioning. Feedback is providing information about how you're doing based on those evaluations for the sole purpose of improving performance. And our evaluations, the written pieces, are just a summation of the process of evaluation and feedback. More about our evaluations. Each rotation evaluation is unique. They reflect the educational goals of the rotation. Each rotation director has outlined their expectations for residents on the rotation and what competence looks like. These expectations have been outlined with descriptions of early development of the skill to becoming independent in the skill. By showing you where you are on the evaluation scale, you see the skills you have and can see what to work on next. Evaluations reflect the goals of the rotation. They are not all encompassing, but they do provide information about readiness to be unsupervised and they are tied to the milestones. You may be asking, what exactly is a milestone? The ACGME accredits residency and fellowship programs with the ultimate goal of, quote, improving the patient care delivered by resident and fellow physicians today and in their future independent practice, unquote. To ensure that residents and fellows can be independent, the ACGME has developed milestones for all training programs. Some harmonized milestones are required in all residencies and others are unique to the individual residency. In internal medicine, there are 21 milestones that are developmental roadmap to assess advancement in clinical skills, knowledge, and values necessary to become an independent doctor. Milestones reflect growth from an early learner or a novice to independence. The milestones incorporate the six competencies of patient care, medical knowledge, systems-based practice, practice-based learning and improvement, professionalism, and interpersonal and communication skills. For example, if we look at the first ACGME milestone, Patient Care 1, we are asked to measure a resident's ability to gather and report a hypothesis-driven patient history. An early learner, first column with the red arrow, may need guidance in asking the right questions, even for a patient with a common admission diagnosis like chest pain. Over time and training, the learner will develop the skills to acquire the correct pertinent information by utilizing outside sources and exploring pertinent social determinants of health based on the likely diagnosis and active alternatives. Column four, red arrow, is the target. Of course, there may be some aspirational residents out there, column five, but there really should only be a few. Also, all residents do not necessarily improve across the board at the same time frame. 
The same resident may be in the third column in the clinic and the second column on the wards at the same time. Residents can move back and forth on the scale. It's not uncommon to perform a skill differently based on the circumstances, setting, or rotation. So how are our evaluations used? Most important, they are not a report card. We're done with report cards. What they are is a reflection of where you are in the trajectory to becoming an independent doctor who does not require supervision. They tell us where you are, where you need to go, how can you be even better, and how we can partner with you to get you there. So what's new in our evaluation system? Those of you in your second and third year have met with your program director advisor twice yearly and have received reports on how you are progressing based on the milestones and information from the CCC on assigning values for your milestone progression. Interns will soon be doing this as well. The basic structure of the milestone assessments are the same. They incorporate a growth mindset for the knowledge, skills, and values needed to be independent. Milestones 2.0 are better and have been improved through a deep dive into how the initial milestones worked for programs, residents, and patients. By improving narratives, it is easier to understand what competence looks like. A supplemental guide has also been provided that gives examples of what a CCC might expect at each level and the milestones incorporate important skills not previously measured, like utilization of the electronic health record, clinical reasoning, and attention to one's own wellness. So what are we doing now that there are new milestones? We've been meeting with rotation leaders again to make sure our evaluations are measuring what they're teaching and feel is important to master. We have added examples from our own rotations to give you a sense of what the depth of skill is that's being assessed. These examples may not be something observed, they're just there to give a sense of what the skill level is and what's being looked at. And we are providing ongoing faculty development to help your teachers be better evaluators and provide better feedback. To illustrate this, let's consider this question from an evaluation regarding documentation on the medical wards. Examples are provided to give a sense of where you fall on the continuum from novice to independent doctor. Early documentation should be accurate, but may have extraneous or irrelevant information since early on, you may not know what is important to include. As time goes on, your skills improve and you can document pertinent information succinctly and provide anticipatory guidance for possible complications. Here's another example from the new HEMOC evaluation tool regarding knowledge of testing. Early on, you may be able to describe common diagnostic tests, but maybe you won't have a good grasp of the test limitations or its sensitivity and specificity. As time goes on, your skills improve for multiple tests and you'll be able to choose the appropriate test and grasp how the results will help you. One important that goal that we have as a program is that you shouldn't be surprised by what's on an evaluation. We are working with the faculty to be sure there are no surprises. Evaluation should be documentation of the evaluation and feedback that you have already received. They should be a summation of where you are. We are thrilled to help you successfully go it alone. Thank you for watching.